back to Columbus for Origins 2018. I'm Eric Summer from the Dice Tower. This is Amanda from Cryptozoic Entertainment. Hello. And we have a few games to check out. This is the latest Rick and Morty game. Yes. Uh, one of many. Yes. We yes. were discussing. Definitely. Called The Ricks Must Be Crazy. Now, yes. is this based on a particular episode or situation in the series? Yes. It is based off the episode from which it's named, The Ricks Must Be Crazy. Um, so if you are familiar with our Rick and Morty um, game line, um, each game that we do focuses on a specific episode. Yeah. And it is like a self-contained narrative within that episode. And we try to really get the feel of that episode, too. Um, also, each of our Rick and Morty uh, board games um, are different genres. So this one is an uh, engine building game, okay. which is very ironic if you've seen this episode because this is the episode where uh, Rick tries to repair his engine and we discovered that there's a tiny microverse that inside his engine that powers it. Um, and what powers that microverse is a miniverse that powows a, a, a teeny verse, verse to powers the miniverse and so on and so forth. And we have started in the Rickverse which is the normal reality. Actually, in this game, you start in the teeny verse oh. and you build up, but right. it's very fun. So it is an engine building game, um, which is funny because of the engine building. Yes. But uh, yeah, so it's actually one of our more, more Euro Rick and Morty games. It's okay. a little more complex and complicated and there's a lot of strategy involved. Yeah. Some of them are more like party games or deck builders and this one's a more like strategy engine building game. Cool. Um, what's really cool about this one is um, there are four types of cards. Uh, there's a power supply card, which is actually uh, mu contributes to a mutual power supply that is actually on uh, this power supply board. So as you build power supplies, you do get victory points, but it contributes to a general power supply. Um, after the building phase in which you build your power supplies and your contraptions, uh, then the contraptions start to steal energy from the mutual power supply for your own personal gain. So it does become a battle for energy. Right. Yes. So uh, the more inventions you have, the more efficient they are, the more energy you steal from the pool. Yeah. Um, there are also one-shots and ability cards that also uh, allow players to steal energy from the general energy supply. Uh -huh. However, if there's not enough general energy, there's not enough stuff for your things. So you do have to have a balance with the people you're playing with right. to make sure that you have enough energy going to power everyone's stuff. So even if they take some, there's still some left over for you. Right, but also if you see somebody that's way ahead in building things, you can mm -hmm. not contribute as much to the pool. So well, that you can build in different universes. So that's Oh, really? There's a movement component in which universe that you're in. So if somebody has all their stuff here, you can build up here. So you can build your power supply so it skips them. So there is a movement component on where you are, and there's okay. bonuses for which universe you're in, and there's also consequences for each universe you're in. So it's a it's a it's a game of balance and strategy, and making yeah. sure that you get yours, and you know all that fun stuff. Sounds like a lot to keep track of. Yeah, it's a it's a challenging like strategy game, uh, right. but it doesn't take all too long. Um, yeah, what's what's the playtime? Uh, let me see. It's. I actually don't know. Uh, it usually doesn't take too long, maybe like uh, 45 minutes ish. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, available now? Oh, yes. This came out just last last week or the week before. Mm -hmm. And That's it is $20. The Ricks must be crazy. Yeah. All right, let's let's shift gears a All little right. bit. We'll we'll change universes mm -hmm. uh, away from Rick and Morty yes. to a game that comes in a wallet. Yes, it's called Wallet. This is the whole game. I, it uh, comes, I guess it comes in a wallet. Like this. Oh yes, <laughs> it does come like this. Um, so this is Wallet, and so the whole game takes place inside the wallet. Okay. Um, so the story is that you are at a party for a mob boss, and the party's full of terrible people. Okay. And uh, the cops are coming, so he takes off on his helicopter or whatever. But As leaves behind, mob bosses do. Mm -hmm, leaves behind his wallet. So the goal of the game is to appear innocent. Uh, you have a card, or you have a hand of five cards. Um, on your turn, you can do one of four things. You can put incriminating evidence into the wallet to get it out of your hand. Okay. You can pull a card out of the wallet if you need something. Um, you can buy an ID for 300 currency if that's something that you're needing. Um, or if you have everything that you need, you can flip a timer. So it's a set completion party game. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, are there different pockets inside this yes, wallet so for the gameplay whole, purposes? Yes. Yeah, so the whole game is in here. So in this main pocket is the deck of cards. I'll try to get it going. So inside is the whole deck of cards. You start with your five cards. There's currency. There we go. IDs. There's a variety of different... Um, qualifications that you must satisfy to be innocent. Uh, you can't have more than one currency. You can't have more than one ID. 
uh, and you can't have uh, over 500 currency. Okay. Um, however, uh, rules are made to be broken. So characters like the millionaire, um, he's the only one that must have more than 500 currency. Otherwise, you're a crummy millionaire. Right. Um, it looks like a fake ID, you know, uh, right. things like that. Uh, the secret agent has to have more than one ID, things like that. Okay. Uh, there's also some incriminating items like a credit card. If you're John Smith and you have John Smith's credit card, you're guilty. If you're John Smith and you have John Smith's credit card, you get extra money. Okay. So it is the goal of the game to um, have as much currency as possible while also looking innocent. Interesting. Yeah. All right, what's the play time on that one? Oh, it's uh, like 15 to 30 minutes. So each round goes really quick. Um, there's, uh, here we are, there are six timer cards. And so once these are flipped over, sorry, I keep setting up more things. <laughs> so once these are flipped over, uh, once the wallet goes around, you flip over a timer. Oh, okay. Once it goes around again, you flip over another timer. Or if you already have your set complete, you can flip it over on purpose to make your friends sweat a little bit. Ah, you can, oh, they're okay. up here, they're up here, come on. So home. as many as six turns, but it could go a little faster than uh -huh. that. Uh-huh, yep. <laughs> okay, and you said this one's not available yet. No, this one will be available at Gen Con. It okay. is available uh, as a, or no, excuse me, this one is actually coming out um, July 11th. So this okay. one's just about just about here. Uh, this one um, is available for pre-sale, or is that, I'm not sure if that's the right term, but it is available at Origins. Okay. You can buy it here if you're at Origins. Um, yeah, a fun little treat. All right, mm -hmm. that is Wallet. Now, yes. one more that has certainly caught my interest Let's, yes. let's move some wallet yeah. <laughs> cards out of the way. Uh -huh. Those can go back in the wallet. Yeah. Is Pantone the game? Yes. Now, how do you make a game based around a color gradient system? This one's very fun. Um, this is one of my favorite ones to talk about, and it's one of my favorite ones to show because okay. you can Whoa. also um, play it really easy. Wow, all right. all right. This looks like the color so, swatches at my Home um, Depot. For people that might have been following Cryptozoic at home, I believe this is the first time that we've actually had a prototype to show. We've just been having, um, or we, well, we had prototypes, we had handmade prototypes. This is actually what the game is going to look like. Okay. So that is the first time it's available. So here, I think I'll do one of my favorites. We'll play it, we'll play real quick. Let's do. Or, there we go. We can oh, okay. flip it over. Uh, kind of blends in there, but we will fit there. Oh, am I? Am I? Are you making a picture? Yes. I'm doing it for the camera. Okay. So if you can do your best to flip that, that's a pop culture character. Is that Marge Simpson? Yes, it is. Wow. You know how to play the game. <laughs> Okay. So the first round, um, there are character cards. Um, you pick, uh, f I believe it's you pick four ca four cards, and then you get to look and then discard one. And then so you have three cards. There are three characters that you will be um, presenting. Okay. And so um, you you pick your card and you create your character. And everybody has to guess who it is. If nobody can guess, they get one hint, and then they lose points. If they still can't guess, you give them another hint, they get less points. And then when they finally guess it, that's how many points that they, that you and the guesser both receive. Right. Mm -hmm. So the first round, you can use as many cards as you'd like, um, as many colors as you'd like. The second round, you can use only one of any, one of each color. So you can use all the colors, but only one of each. And then the third round, you can only use three cards. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's been really fun, and it's been really, really fun to um, like play this with people at conventions. It's really easy to get the hang of, um, and it's just like a really fun party game. And then a lot of people can play. That's another fun thing. Okay. Do you usually play in teams, partners? How do you usually divide the uh, the groups? There are different ways to play it. Um, uh, there's different rule sets, advanced play modes with uh, speed painter. You reduce the time an artist has to make their creation to only 30 seconds. Yep. Um, there's minimalist, you can only use uh, three total swatch cards. Um, there's different team rules. Um, you can really do it however you'd like. What's the most elaborate mosaic you've seen somebody put together using the cards? Oh my goodness. Um, it took us the longest time to figure it out. It was the second round, so they could only use one of each color, which kind of threw us off. Okay. And they had prints, and they made the print symbol with cards, which 
I mean, that works. I mean, you can whatever it takes for you to get to get there. Right. Definitely works. I I'm think, not even sure I'd know how to do that. Oh gosh, I think another one of my favorites that I've seen was uh, this. Again, uh, it's facing the camera. Uh, I mean, that that looks like a penguin to me. Um, it is a cartoon character. Is it Daffy Duck? Yes. <laughs> just, okay. Just, just three cards. Yeah. Well, it looks like Thanks a baby not. Daffy Duck because he doesn't uh, yeah, have. Yeah, I, he doesn't... need to have like the feet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. There you go. You know. Yeah. There it's we amazing go. the human mind's ability to recognize colors and shapes. Yeah. Like, when I first heard about the, our game designer was talking about this game, I was like, really? How do you do that? But like, people get really creative, and your brain can like really get right. it really quick. You sort of get, and and these are sort of iconic colors, which I guess mm -hmm. the whole point. Yeah. Um, that that can be put together in different ways. This is kind of a fascinating game. When when can we get our hands on Pantone? Uh, Pantone will be available at Gen Con okay. in August. Excellent. Amanda, thank you so much yeah, for spending some time with us. Uh, we got some great games from Cryptozoic. Mm -hmm. We have more from Origins on the way. Thanks for watching.